So I wanna read a passage of scripture tonight out of Mark chapter 16, which we commonly refer to as the Great Commission. And it says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So in this portion of scripture, really, you know, Jesus is giving the disciples the commission before he leaves to go into the world and preach the gospel wherever your world might be. Your world might be your job, school, your family, your neighborhood, your church, your, you know, wherever that may be. But he said to go into that world and to preach the gospel. Proverbs tells us, he who wins souls is wise. And so I believe that Jesus really had people on his mind and had people on his mind when he was on the cross and then wanting you and I to take the gospel message that men would repent and believe and that they would be saved. And so he's given us that responsibility to go into the world and do that. But then he goes on into verse 17. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So the believer doesn't follow signs. Signs follow the believer. And so we can just expect that he is going to confirm his word with these signs that are going to follow our lives. So we don't want to get away from something he's trying to get to follow us. And then he lays out that they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues, you know, any take up a serpent. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. And I mean, for a missionary, and you know, that's a great word. And it says, they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so, you know, these are great things that Jesus is speaking about. Now, a lot of people would say, you know, well, salvation is the most important thing, and it is the most important thing. I mean, there's no two ways about it. And, you know, when we get to the end of our lives, it is the great reward of the Christian. And so when, of course, you know, we, we pass on into eternity and resurrection power raises us and we're with Christ, and that's a wonderful thing, it's a great hope. But as I read this portion of scripture, I don't see these things in uh, Mark, starting in verse 17, talking about for the end of our life and having something for the end of our life. I see that as something that Jesus wants here and now, right now for our lives, not the end of our lives, but right now. That right now we could walk in that resurrection power and have that demonstration of the spirit right here and right now, that we don't have to wait till the end of our lives. Sometimes I think that people, it's kind of like, you know, just Put your time in, and when you get to the end of your life, that's when it's really gonna get good. When you finally die and you go to eternity, then it's gonna get good. But you know what? I see right here and right now that Jesus wants life to be good, wants ministry to be good. And in fact, Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith, today, right now. You know, the difference between hope and faith is this. Hope looks into the future and says, I hope it's done. Faith is now, and it says it is done. And so as we read these particular things in the scripture, I see where that resurrection power of Christ is for right now. You know, I don't want to tell my kids, I don't want to tell young people, you know, just sit in the church, wait till you get to the end of your life, and that's when it's gonna, you're really gonna enjoy. That's when it's gonna get good. You know what, I think we need to teach them right now, this generation, that the power is for now. The Holy Spirit is for now. The gospel is for now. This glory and this anointing and this power of God is for right now. And that we need to expect all of these things. We need to expect these things as believers because when I read the word of God, as Jesus was received up into heaven, verse 20 says, they went forth everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the signs with signs following. Well, you know what? If God worked with them and the Lord worked with, with that people, I believe he'll work with this people. He'll work with me. He'll work with you. And we need to believe that and become a courageous people to
to take the gospel and the word of God and go into this world and not be indifferent towards it, but begin to preach it, begin to expect it, and anticipate a mighty awakening and move of God through these signs, wonders, and miracles to bring many souls into the kingdom. So we want to see this generation empowered and sent forth and to be courageous. So let's be those people tonight. Amen.